as more and more organizations move their workloads to the cloud there will be a growing need for cloud native integration solutions that are designed specially to work in the cloud environments many of these organizations have a mix of on premises cloud based and saas applications as more and more organizations adopt azure there will be a growing need for azure integration developers to connect these different systems and data sources together hi this is shri welcome to my youtube channel unlike my previous videos this will be a series that will help you in your azure integration journey in this series we will be exploring the different azure services and technologies that are commonly used in the integration solutions as well as best practices for building and deploying integration solutions in the first video we will be setting the base and context for the series we will talk about prerequisites what do we need to know a friend to embark on this journey after that we will start with some basics we'll understand what is an integration solution we'll look into ipass then we will see the basics of azure integration services what are the prerequisites for this if you are a developer and know about c sharp python or javascript then it is for you you need to have basic knowledge of azure services and technologies if you have worked with azure app services functions then it makes the transition easy these are the two things that are enough and with a bit of hard work we can make it happen okay let's look into some basics now what is integration solution in simple terms it is not about building an end to end application it's more about connecting applications and data sources together in an enterprise world this can include connecting different systems to share data or integrating different software tools to automate the process the goal of an integration solution is to make it easy for different systems and applications to communicate and share the information now let's take a pass here and understand the term ipass ipass meaning integration platform as a service it is a type of integration solution that is delivered through the cloud meaning it is serverless with ipass there is no need for expensive and complex on premise integration infrastructure it is an integration solution deployed to the cloud to connect your on premises and cloud based applications now let's take a second pass and understand what is azure integration services azure integration services is microsoft offering to build ipass solutions it is based on some key azure components which can be used together or independently to create solid reusable integration solution in azure now we will look into what are the key components of azure integration services then i will walk you through a simple integration solution that i have built the four key components of azure integration services are azure api management which is to publish and secure your apis logic apps this is for workflows and orchestration allows you to create workflows that integrate various systems and services together service bus an enterprise messaging queue allows you to send and receive messages between two different systems in reliable and secure way even grid it is to build an event driven application that allows you to handle events from various sources and take actions based on those events by using these four key components we can build most reliable and reusable integration platform in azure before we demo i just want to make few things clear we don't need to use only these four on their own to build integration services for example you can use azure functions to write some custom code all azure services will come with this and can connect to the integration services through logic apps api management or service bus the logic apps have a connector library to connect to all sorts of azure services now let's look at the demo we will build a simple integration to process the orders being an enterprise you might need to connect to all sorts of different systems to process the orders what we want to do is we take the orders via restful api perform validations and we submit it to external systems for processing the external system could be anything sap dynamics or a third party api you could have a logic app that submits the order to external system it can orchestrate the flow and submit the order for processing this logic app takes all the orders from the service bus 
we can place all the orders in the service bus to take the advantage of everything the message broker will offer. Another logic app that places the messages on the service bus queue. We have two logic apps. One receives the order and other processes the order. The reason why we are separating them is we have one business action which receives the messages and other business action that processes the messages. Separation of concerns. Printing all this is APIM. As we talked about API driven previously, with APIM printing, it can be exposed as RESTful API to all the consumers. Now let's jump on to Azure portal to implement this integration. I have already created some of the resources which are required for our integration. Let's take a quick look at these ones. The first one is API management. As we discussed before, we are using API management to front our integration solution so we can expose our integration solution as a RESTful API in more secure manner. And the next one is we have also created a service bus. As I said, we're going to have two large caps separated one will pick up the orders and other one will process the orders and we have the service bus to act as a message broker between these two logic apps if i go back then i have created an azure function within the azure function i have created two functions one is to validate the orders and another one is to process the orders the first one is validate orders this is to demo we can use custom code within the integration and the next one is process order this is to demo we can use third party APIs. We can simply send the request to third party API to process the orders. Okay, now let's create a logic app to receive the order. The logic app name is order receive and for the demo purpose consumption plan is okay. Next tags, just click on the review and create. We have the logic app ready. Let's go to the newly created receive order logic app. This will be simply an HTTP request, HTTP trigger. To give the request body JSON schema, simply let's use the sample payload. This is a sample request, simply the customer ID and items, item ID and quantity, just a sample data done, and it will generate the schema automatically. So when this kind of HTTP request is received, what we're gonna do is first, we're going to validate this HTTP request using our Azure function. Let's pick the Azure function, process orders, and validate orders. And the request body is body of the HTTP trigger, and it will be a post method, and we're going to validate the orders. Validate order Azure function will return a JSON response. Within the JSON response, it will have a property called is valid, and the value of the property will be true. So we need to check for that property value to see if it is true or not. So for that, we have to look into the response and check for that property and see if it is valid or not. To do that, we need a control. We have to select the control and a condition control and the value. The value will be body within the response body. We have to uh, retrieve the property. So let's do an expression. I have this ready. Simply the expression will be within the response body of the validate orders. There is a is valid property. Just retrieve the value of that property and value will be true. When that value will be true, what we're going to do is we need to place the message into service bus queue. So service bus action, send the message, just look for the send message action. And we have to create the service bus connection. We don't have one. We have to go and grab the service bus connection string. Um, let's go back to our service bus resource to grab the connection string. It will be under shared access policies. And just copy the primary connection string here. Go back. Connection name will be simply SB order. And just place the connection and create. Cool. It has connected to the service bus now. Okay, it populated with the orders queue. We have already created a queue named order. So we're going to place the message in this queue. And for the parameter, 
we need to specify the content of the message the content of the message will be we just simply whatever we receive we're going to place the entire message in service bus that's all good there after you place a message simply you return success response you just look for the response action yep just leave it there and when there is an error when the data validation failed we simply say bad request bad request http code will be 400 okay save completed let's test this quickly run trigger with payload press sample data and run okay it failed let's go back and see the expression result is false okay let's see what's wrong there and this is weird it should work but let's try this save saved successfully now let's run let's give it one more try okay this time we got 200 that's very good sign let's go back do a refresh okay fresh run at nine o'clock and yeah the message has been successfully placed in our order queue and this is a message content so we have created order receive logic app which will pick up the request, validate the request and places the message in service bus. Now let's build the next logic app, which will pick up the message from service bus queue and process it. Now let's create process order logic app. The logic app name will be process order iPhone one. And for demo purpose, again, the consumption plan is okay. Review and create, click on create. We have the resource ready. Let's go to the resource. As soon as you go to the newly created logic app, it will open up the designer by default. Now, in our case, the process order logic app picks up the request from service bus queue. So the trigger will be when message is received in service bus queue. Just check that action and it already picked up the SBI fund order which we created previously, which is well and good. Yep, let's pick that and continue. And name of the queue that we need to look for is orders Let's select that. And how often do you want to check for items? We want to check for one minute. So we are pulling every time the service bus queue to see if there is a message or not. When you say we are polling, meaning every poll considered as an execution and every execution will add up to the cost. When you have so many such logic apps which are continuously polling, which will add to your cost, that's when we have to consider moving toward the event driven architecture. So we can use the event grid and the logic app can be triggered only when there is an event published within the event grid. That's an event driven architecture for demo purpose. We are not doing all of that. We are simply doing it with the service bus queue. No parameters needed for the demo purpose. Then the next step will be we simply going to process this order. Uh, we have already created an Azure function to process the order. Let's pick that one, process the order and the request body would be the service bus message. And method will be simply post. Yeah, that's it and simply so as soon as you save the logic app it should pick up the two requests which are sitting in our order queue let's go to the logic app run history and see if it started to pick up those runs this is already picked up and which got succeeded it picked up the message from the service bus queue and it processed the order now let's add api management in front of our integration solution so we can expose our integration solution as a restful api in more secure manner I'm in our enterprise API, API management instance. Go to API and simply create an API from the logic app. The logic app, just browse it and select the order receive because that's a HTTP trigger. If you see, it did not pick up the other logic app, which is a process order. The logic app trigger is a service bus queue. That's why it was not picked up and order receive, order receive is fine. And the URL simply just to make it more fancy api slash order and create okay we have the api created now simply let's test this one okay it picked up uh, our schema automatically let's send this one okay we have received 200 and if i go back to our resource group to see if it went through just go to our uh, pickup logic app process order logic app at 9 13 yep there was a message and if i go back to order receive there should be order receive which should be picked up already at 9 13 which picked up and process the message this is a simple integration solution that uses core components we are not done yet 
Stay tuned for this in-depth series where we dive into each component and showcase its full potential with practical examples. Subscribe now and join me on this exciting journey. Thank you for tuning in. This is Shri signing off.